climbed up in the morning mist, awaiting the starting gun, are the world's best bass fishermen. Baseball, football, tennis, and golf were designed originally for pure enjoyment. So was angling. Now angling, too, has its professionals, star fishermen who are highly honored and financially rewarded. The Miller Highlight Bass Masters Classic is to bass fishing what the World Series is to baseball. It's a competition among America's best anglers who have qualified in earlier tournaments for America's favorite game fish, the largemouth black bass. At the starting gun, the contest is on for the $15,000 winner-take-all prize. Contestants boarded a plane in New Orleans two days ago to be flown to a mystery lake, which turned out to be this 80 mile long impoundment in South Carolina called Clark Hill Reservoir. Each of the 26 competitors has had one eight hour practice day to familiarize himself with the lake. All throughout their single practice day, these fishermen sought out the most likely places to fish. Now they are fishing for keeps, ready to make each minute count casting for the most pounds of fish in three eight-hour fishing days, concentrating on reaching the best water swiftly, hoping then to choose the right lure and to fish that lure in exactly the right way. The man behind all this competition, the president of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, is Ray Scott. I guess every fisherman in the world has a peculiar device or fishing uh, technique or equipment that he likes particularly. But for the 1973 Miller High Life Bassmaster Classic, we equipped each fisherman for the event with a boat just as you see here. A 16-foot bass boat with an 85 horsepower engine. And in addition to that, a power trim device that let him operate this same engine in the shallow or deep waters and at any speed. On the console or cockpit area, he's equipped with a depth sounder a temperature gauge, and a multitude of full instrument paneling. Probably the most important single device in this entire cockpit area is this little device called the kill switch. And once it's connected to the ignition system, and should the driver leave the cockpit area for any reason, this little safety device provides that the engine will be killed. Watch this. Instantly cuts off. Now, as a fisherman fish through the course of the fishing days of the tournament, they bring their fish in alive, and they do this with the use of the aerating live system provided by the Oki Bug Company. This little box is designed to keep plenty of air and plenty of oxygen and fresh water for the fish to stay alive. And at the end of the day, they're released alive to swim again. Once the fisherman gets to his fishing destination, he comfortably seats himself in the cockpit area where he has his electric trolling motor and his electric anchor, and most can be used just by the touch of his foot or his toe. For example, the electric trolling motor is a device that provides him with foot operation that gives both hands free for fishing. In addition to that, he has a, an anchor that works very simply with the toe or the hand. Again, during the course of bringing it aboard, he, he has full use of his hand for fishing purposes. One of the new gadgets that the fishermen are using nowadays is this Sentry Oxygen Meter, a unique little uh, item that it tells instantly the oxygen reading anywhere in the lake and at any depth. This boat and all of the, the Miller Highlight Bass Master Classic features is designed to give every fisherman in the country that's interested the how-tos of bass fishing. And our organization, the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, in an effort to, to push and, and forward toward conservation of projects of all sorts, hope that the Bass Master Classic will help fishermen everywhere. Oxygen monitors, depth finders, and temperature gauges are the tools of the modern fisherman in his search for schools of bass. Tom Mann of Eufaula, Alabama, always a fine competitor. 
takes his chances in a flooded forest and finds some good fish. Billy Westmoreland of Salina, Tennessee, works the shoreline where the drop-off is steep. Andy Williams of Union Springs, Alabama, hooks a snag and loses precious minutes of fishing time. Bill Dance of Memphis fishes intently. The outdoor rider, who is his judge for the day, can relax with no fishing pressure at all. Roland Martin fishes right through his lunch break. Wendell Mann of Snow Camp, North Carolina, won the club elimination wild spot for his classic entry. Dance, a top money winner and a bright star of the tournament trail, brings a good one up from the deep waters. In order to have their catches qualify, each contestant must be back to the weigh-in station by four o'clock of the fishing day. Bill Dance, end of the first day, you told me last night you were gonna go after them. What'd you do today? Well, uh, I got a limit. I got a limit of 10. I guess I caught uh, between 20 and 25 fish today and uh, measured 12 of them were keepers and I kept the best 10. What do you think of total of the weight? Uh, my total? Oh, maybe 15 pounds. You said 315s would do all right, so you got a good start, huh? I sure have. If I can just keep it up for the next two days, I'll be all right, I believe. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Greg. Wendell, man, you didn't know whether you'd be here or not, but you beat all the other chapters. Now, this is the end of the first day. What'd you do? I didn't do anything. Caught a lot of small fish. I caught some fairly decent ones yesterday, but they left on them. So I had two patterns yesterday, and neither one of them today. We lost a couple good fish, that's all. What'd you end up with on weighing in fish? Not a thing, didn't bring a one in. Caught a lot of little fish, but none of them quite big enough? That's right, I'm afraid so. You gonna be in there tomorrow? Yeah, I gotta go back tomorrow. Maybe they'll be where they were yesterday. <laughs> Thank you, Wendell. <laughs> now watch this, the six bass weigh... The survival of the bass that are caught during the tournament is of the greatest importance. The most modern scientific aids are used to ensure their survival. Each contestant's catch must be certified by the outdoor rider who was his companion for the day. Americans are realizing more and more that a good game fish is far too valuable to be caught only once. Studies made at these tournaments will help the average angler learn how to release his catches safely. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kansas Fire Center of this tournament. These men are receiving a bonus of one ounce credit for each bass that comes in alive. For Tom Mann, this is an anxious moment. Watch it down easy, going down 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, 15, 19 pounds, 15 ounces. Tom Mann, after the first day, you're leading with one ounce shy of 20 pounds. Have you ever led on opening day before? Um, no, in the first classic I led second day. But uh, it's the first have, I've led on the classic. I've led a few times in the regular tournaments. Well, yesterday now, you said about 15 pounds a day would uh, be in, put you in pretty good shape. Are you happy with your position right now? Yeah, I am. I'm real happy with it. And uh, I'm just hoping that um, I'll take two more limits the next two days. And I'll just be real tickled if I get two more limits. You settle for 20 pounds a day for the next two days? Sure will. Thank you, Tom, and good luck tomorrow. The leaders at the end of the first day are Tom Mann, Bobby Mehta, Ray Breckenridge, Ernest Neal, and Don Norton.
second day brings a new challenge. No angler is completely out of the running. But those who are low in the standings now feel a deep gut pressure, a driving need to come from behind. One of these is Roland Martin of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the top money winner, not only for the year, but for all time in angling tournaments with a three-year total of over $50,000 in winnings. He's a fisherman's fisherman, a great student of bass and bass angling, a leader in the new breed of anglers who are changing the face of fishing. For me, the key to really first-class bass fishing is fishing structure. What's structure? Structure is fishing any irregular feature out in the lake. I'm talking about away from the shoreline. I'm not talking about surface plug fishing. I'm not talking about spinnerbait fishing. I'm talking about seeking out those deeper areas, irregular features like old underwater islands, old creek channels, old house foundations, an old weed line, any old rock pile, an old fence, anything that's irregular, that's different from the rest of the surrounding bottom, and generally something that has a little bit of brush on it, a little cover, and generally something that's connected with a good drop off. These are the secrets of really finding a good concentration of fish. Now, how do our fish structure? Well, it's really not too hard. There's two or three tools of my trade here. You need a good locator, a good map, and a good selection of lures, and also a marker buoy. Basically, the lures I'm using is the number one all-time structure lure that can't be an equal is the plastic worm. I'm rigging it up with quarter ounce to half ounce lead, according to how deep I want to fish. Another hot lure is uh, vertically jigging a spoon over a good drop off. Another very effective way, not to be confused with the wheelie spoons, or a little George lure. Again, these are heavy metal lures. Now, the key to finding these underwater features is a set of underwater eyes in the form of a fish locator. This enables me to, to search out the three basic ingredients of structure, and that is the depth itself, two, the structural feature, the, the drop-off, and three, the brush or cover that forms the ambush point for any one or single bass or possibly a school of bass. Now, to find these areas, Basically, I first look at, say, a good contour map. I search out creek channels, underwater islands, any type of irregular feature on this map. In a clear lake, I'd be looking for deeper water, probably 15 to 30 foot. However, if the water's muddy or dingy, the fish can't see as well, they'll be shallower, 5, 10 foot. But I'm eliminating a lot of unproductive water by using the map. Maybe 95% of the lake is not suitable for structure. When I finally find the right pattern, that exact depth, the exact type of structure, in the exact type of cover, I'm going to concentrate again on identifying the same identical pattern on this map. So it's a very efficient way of finding structure quick. Of course, the final step is going there and catching fish. One other little tool that I use that's very effective is a reference buoy or a marker buoy. When I see the good structure on the locator, I merely drop this marker buoy. It's a reference point. It keeps me oriented exactly where it is. Usually the first thing I do is drop a spoon right down to the drop-off or possibly throw the plastic worm right by the marker buoy and just hope there's a school of fish there. Because that's the real secret, the real key to structure fishing is the fact that the bass are concentrated. They're in a school. And if a tournament fisherman can find a school of two and three and four pound fish, 15 or 20 of them, and catch his limit in an hour or so, he has a very, very good chance of winning the tournament. Only artificial lures are allowed for the contest, and the anglers check them carefully to make the best presentation, cast after cast. Untangling a line takes precious time, and a lure that doesn't draw strikes calls for a change. Roland Martin finds some fish, but they're small ones. The winner of the first classic championship at Nevada's Lake Mead in 1971, Bobby Murray, works the surface in smooth water. Back among his favorite sunken trees, Tom Mann, the first day's leader, finds the going tougher and the fish smaller. Breckenridge, an Arkansas farmer, finds a good school.
Bill Dance continues to fish in the deeper water, and he locates a good school, too. Then the time is up, and the fishing for the second day is over. Roland Martin, what'd you do today? Did terrible. Terrible? Yeah. Caught five little bitsy fish. How big were they? Oh, they're about a pound and a half. Were they in the same place as you found them yesterday? No. I, I went back to all my places I found them yesterday, and I hooked one and lost it. It's the only strike I had. Were they at 17 feet? They were, that no. one was 17. The rest of them were, were another depth. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Now, man, you were in leading the, after the yesterday. You're still ahead. Yeah, I am till they weigh in. <laughs> How many fish did you get today? Got five bass. What do you think they weigh? Uh, about eight, nine pounds. Right, did the fish move on you? Yep. They were gone. Think you're going to go back to the same place tomorrow? Nope. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Real. How'd you do? Uh, I did pretty well. Around 20 pounds, I believe. You think you got 20 pounds today? Yes. How much did you have yesterday? Fifteen, six. Uh, you think that'll put you in first place at the end of the day? I don't have no idea. I hope so. What do you think your biggest fish will go? Three, three and a half. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Eight, five. Eight pounds, five ounces. After two days of fishing, Rayo Breckenridge of Arkansas has soared to the top with 40 pounds and one ounce of fish, followed by Bill Dance with 29.8, Don Norton with 29.4, Tom Mann with 29.3, and Russell Cook with 28 pounds and three ounces. Evenings call for general good times, shared by the contestants and their wives, and the friendly South Carolina people at Hickory Knob State Park. Bobby Murray and Roland Martin, do y'all feel like you're out of it or you're going to win it? Uh, Grids, I don't think there's any real chance of winning it. Uh, of course, we're going to go out and try to catch a real fine string of fish today. You're going to look for a lot of fish or big fish? I'm going to look for some fish early, and I'm going to look for big fish from maybe 10 or 11 o'clock on. Roland, what are you going to do? Well, Grids, it comes to the point of pride. At this, at this point of the game, we both have to retaliate with limits to let people know we can still catch fish. <laughs> We're so far behind. All we can do is come in with a nice looking stringer and they say, ah, they really are fishermen. Got one more day, good luck. Okay. Thank you, Chris. By the third and final day, the contestants are divided up into three categories. Those near the top with a competitive chance to win, those for whom only a miraculous catch can give them that winner-take-all prize, and those who are far, far down on the list and who are fishing to maintain their reputations, or just fishing for fun. A relaxed Bobby Murray covers the water with easy casts. Roland Martin experiments with a number of diving plugs, testing tactics for his next tournament.
Tom Mann, after trying some other areas and still hoping for another great day like his first one, finally returns to his favorite trees. Deep water fishing continues to pay off for Bill Dance and keeps him in contention. Rail Breckenridge continues to work the shoreline and the waters of medium depth. It's too late for Bobby Murray's good day's catch to give him anything but angling satisfaction. The bass haven't come back to Tom Mann's submerged forest, so he keeps on moving. There's a keen sense of competition between the two leaders, Bill Dance and Ray Breckenridge. One is fishing deep and the other one moderately shallow and they're both steadily adding to their already impressive catches. It's not the biggest fish, but the most pounds in the total catch that will take the prize. The consistent capture of mature bass is the true measure of an angler's ability. Very large fish are mainly a matter of luck, but when one does come along, it can give just the extra weight needed to win. Rio, you're leading it going into the day. How was it out there today? A little slow. I got seven fish. What happened to your fish? They moved on me. They moved out. Were they in the same place, the ones you caught? Yes, they was. You get a lot of big ones? No, I didn't. They were small fish. What are the biggest one you got? Uh, I hadn't looked at them that close. A little over two pounds, probably. What do you think a total of them would weigh? Eight or ten pounds, something like that. Think they're going to hold up? I'm just hoping they will. Hope so. Thank you. Bill Dance, how many did you get? I got a limit. They look like pretty good fish. Hold them up there. Let me look at them. Oh, I, I don't know how much weight I got, Grit. They were pretty deep, weren't they? Yeah. About 40, 42 feet. Right, Charlie? About you caught 40. most of them in the last hour? Uh, better than the better ones, yes. You got a chance. I hope so, Grit. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready? Ray O'Brien Ridge's catch, seven bass. 12 pounds, one ounce for yesterday's leader. Let's give him a great hand. Real. For Memphis, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, he has 10 bass. All 10 of them alive, which means that's 10 more ounces. Right now, he's uh, just uh, from 20, about uh, 21 or 2 pounds from the lead. Are you ready? Oh, not quite. 18 pounds, 12 ounces. Mighty close, mighty close. Yeah. I'd like to introduce at this time, Mr. Saunders. We're very, very proud to be associated with this event. And I think that Rayo has won this trophy in three days of hard fishing. And he deserves a great hand from everybody here. <laughs> Ray old Breckenridge, this is the first tournament you won, isn't it? It sure is. You picked a good one. Well, I, I'm really proud that uh, I picked the right one. And you got uh, 15 pounds the first day, 25 the second, and 12 today, right? Right. How'd you feel when you were out there and only getting those few fish? Uh, I was worried, really. They come uh, about an hour apart, 30 minutes to an hour apart. You caught them all day long? 
Yeah, we really did. Uh, they were very slow today. Well, what did you think of the lake in general? It's a nice lake. It's, it's got plenty of structure, creek channels, everything. Did you find them deep or shallow? They were from 5 to 15 foot deep. And what'd you catch them on? I caught them on a strawberry jelly worm, six inches. Most of them. I caught a few on some woolly bullies. I caught some on some, uh, a little scooper. You gonna be back for that next tournament on se in September on this same lake? I sure hope so. Good. Thank you, Rayo Breckenridge, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. For most Americans, angling is still largely an amateur sport, a source of fun and relaxation, with no score kept. But these competitors put their skills on the line and win or lose with good grace in a sport they love. Like every other fisherman, Bill Dance has a great story to tell about the big one that got away, the eight-pounder that would have won the tournament for him. But as everyone knows, that's fishing. These tournament anglers are not only leading the way to new and better fishing techniques, but to safer use and reuse of our greatest angling resource, the fish themselves. These South Carolina bass will go right on living to breed more of their kind for the best possible sport for the future.